Once again, in this week's Torah portion, Bahar, which means on the mount, we read about the sabbatical year and also about the year of Jubilee. Leviticus chapter 25, verse 1 through 4, tells us that in the sabbatical year, meaning every seventh year, the land itself was to rest. There was no sowing your field, no pruning your vineyard. Think about it similar in ways to the regular weekly Sabbath where we rest on the seventh day. Somebody say, thank God it's Shabbat. Thank God it's Shabbat. Now the sabbatical year is also connected with the year of release referred to in Hebrew as the Shemitah year, the Shemitah, where in the seventh year, all debts were forgiven according to Deuteronomy 15, verse one through three. Each person who had to borrow money was given a clean slate. And also there's an added emphasis uh, in Deuteronomy 15 on helping the poor and the needy, if you want to read that chapter a little bit later. Now we know that Yeshua, who is the Torah made flesh, he elaborates deeper uh, on this subject in the Brit HaDashah, on the subject of forgiveness of debts, teaching us to forgive the sins, comparing it to debts, forgive the sins of those who have sinned against us in Matthew chapter six, when he teaches us in the Lord's Prayer to say, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And then also in Matthew chapter 18, where he teaches to forgive 70 times seven times, meaning without limit. And so for a full teaching on the sabbatical year and on the year of the Shemitah, you can get uh, the message from May 19th, 2012. Also, we know Rabbi Jonathan Kahn has put out an excellent book on the Shemitah, the mystery of the Shemitah. But today, I want to focus more on the year of Jubilee, the year of Jubilee, in Hebrew pronounced Shanat HaYovel, and we're going to see how it is fulfilled in Yeshua and also make personal application of the Jubilee in our lives today. So if you have your Bibles with you, let's turn please to Leviticus chapter 25. Leviticus chapter 25, let's begin with verse 8. And you shall count seven Sabbaths of years for yourself, seven times seven years, and the time of the seven Sabbaths of years shall be to you forty-nine years. Then you shall cause the shofar of the jubilee to sound on the tenth day of the seventh month, meaning on Yom Kippur, on the Day of Atonement, you shall make the shofar to sound throughout all your land. And you shall consecrate the 50th year and proclaim liberty throughout all the land to all its inhabitants. It shall be a jubilee for you, and each of you shall return to his possession, and each of you shall return to his family. So in the year of jubilee, every man was free to return to the property that was originally given to him or allotted to him and his family under the leadership of Joshua, and this would be after the future conquest of Canaan. Even if he previously sold his property to another Israelite, or even if he and his family were working as hired hands on another Israelite's property, when that shofar sounded, hallelujah, everyone was free to go home. Now, in reality, it's impossible for us today to count the 49 years leading up to the year of Jubilee because no one would know when to begin counting. The Jubilee was not observed prior to, during, or after the Assyrian and Babylonian exile. And furthermore, as we read here, the Jubilee calls for all 12 tribes and their inhabitants to be back in the land. Otherwise, the property cannot be returned to its rightful owners. 
The reinstitution of the year of Ju of the year of Jubilee literally is the work of the Messiah. When Yeshua returns, hallelujah, he will declare the jubilee of all Amen. jubilees. Hallelujah. Amen. And that's when the counting will begin again, when the King of Israel returns in connection with the millennial reign of the Messiah. This will also be when the Torah will go forth from Zion and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem, which will include what we've read here about the year of Jubilee in Leviticus chapter 25. This also will be when all the inhabitants will be back in the land again. Now, not only will the land be divided up among the Israelites, but also to those who stood with them in the last days. Let's turn to the prophet Ezekiel chapter 47. Really an incredible prophecy here. Ezekiel 47. Again, this is a latter-day millennial reign prophecy. Let's begin with verse 21. Thus you shall divide this land among yourselves according to the tribes of Israel. It shall be that you will divide it by lot as an inheritance for yourselves and for the strangers, in Hebrew, Gerim, those from the nations, who dwell among you, those who stand with Israel in the last days, who dwell among you, and who bear children among you. They shall be to you as native-born among the children of Israel. They shall have an inheritance, meaning land rights, with you among the tribes of Israel. And it shall be that in whatever tribe the stranger Reads in Hebrew Gair, the stranger dwells, there you shall give him his inheritance, says the Lord God. Isn't that amazing? That in the end, Gentiles who stood with Israel will themselves receive land rights. Praise God. And you know, when you think about it, that's the way it's supposed to be according to the word of God, not Palestinians who are trying to steal the land for themselves and trying to wipe Israel off the map. That's not yeah. God's way. That's right. This is God's way. We just read it. Yeah. Oh. Now Paul adds in Ephesians 2.19 and Ephesians chapter 3 verse 6 that Gentile believers in Yeshua, how many of you are believers in Yeshua? Raise your hand. That Gentile believers in Yeshua are fellow heirs and fellow citizens with the Jewish people and share in the commonwealth of Israel. Praise the Lord. You know, when Hashem grafts you into that olive tree of Israel, as we read here, He really grafts you in permanently. Hallelujah. Come on. Also, verse 9 and 10 of this chapter tells us that even the Dead Sea is going to be alive at that time. How many of you know today that God can take something that was dead and make it live again? Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now also in the year of Jubilee, all debts were completely canceled. No matter what you owed someone, all mortgage, lease, rental, and labor agreements were automatically terminated. All personal debts were completely wiped out. Somebody say such a deal. I think it's time once again for our refresher course on the three different ways to say such a deal. Everybody are you with me? Way number one. Such a deal. Everybody? Such a deal. Way number two. Such a deal. Everyone? Such a deal. And my favorite, probably, way number three, down and dirty. Such a deal. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now the year of Jubilee had a leveling effect on the Israelites. It gave everyone a chance to start over. Again, everyone's slate was wiped clean. 
just as it is for you and me when we accepted the Messiah Yeshua into our lives. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, If anyone is in the Messiah, the old has gone, the new has come. He is a brand new creation. Hallelujah. We also read here that the year of Jubilee was ushered in with the sound of the shofar to proclaim liberty all throughout the land, proclaiming freedom and release, a release from the Lord. And we read it was sounded on the Day of Atonement on Yom Kippur when sins were forgiven through the blood of atonement. Now, the word Jubilee in Hebrew is pronounced Yovel. Yovel, everyone? Yovel. And that actually comes from the root word Yuval, which is translated in English to Jubal. And some of you may remember that Jubal is the name of the very first musician in history, according to Genesis chapter 4, verse 21. Jubal was the father of all musicians. And you know, names have significance, have meaning uh, in the Bible, and Jubal's name means to bring forth a stream, as in a stream of water. Hence, we have all kinds of connections here with the year of Jubilee, the sound of the shofar, the moving of the Holy Spirit, and the prophetic song, because the prophetic song is often equated with what? Streams of living water. Remember Yeshua said in John chapter seven, if anyone is thirsty, let him come unto me, and from his innermost being will flow rivers of living water. Mayim Chaim, hallelujah. Now it's also interesting that the Jubilee in the 50th year, speaking about the Holy Spirit, the Jubilee in the 50th year points to the day of Pentecost when on the 50th day, the Holy Spirit was poured out on Yeshua's disciples. As a matter of fact, the word Pentecost means 50. But you can imagine the joy that came over the whole land when the shofar was sounded. Freedom from debt, freedom from slavery, and everyone was free to go home. Now let's bring that into our present time. Can you imagine if your bank or your mortgage company or your credit card company or well, the IRS called you and said, Mr. and Mrs. So-and-so, I just heard the sound of the shofar proclaiming the year of Jubilee, so everything that you owe us has now been canceled. What would you say? What? Hallelujah! <laughs> Let's see if we can pick, pick on someone. Imagine, Carolyn, if the bank called you and said to you, Miss Harrelson, I just heard the sound of the shofar proclaiming the year of Jubilee. Anything and everything that you owe is completely canceled. What would you say? I'd be just happy. <laughs> Yes, I've learned. How would you respond to something like that? Encyclopedia! <laughs> 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 be fair in the this section here. Uh, Ms. Wilson, yeah. how would you respond if you were completely free of any and all debt? Now we're going to say, such a deal. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got way number one and way number three. I need a way number two. Mr. Roberts. Mr. Roberts, what would you say if you had a call from your bank or the IRS or any other institution that you owe money to, and they said, you just heard the sound of the shofar and your debt is completely forgiven. What would you say? Such a deal!
Maybe instead of naming this message the year of Jubilee, I should have named it such a deal. Okay, now as history continued, after the conquest of Canaan, again under Joshua, the year of Jubilee was and continued to be celebrated in Israel, except for periods of time when the Israelites were in a state of rebellion against God's word meaning when they were committing idolatry or worshiping false gods or practicing pagan customs, in short, abandoning the Torah. And this did begin toward the end of Solomon's reign and it continued for about 400 years under the leadership of many evil kings in Israel and in Judah, and that is what led to the Assyrian and the Babylonian exile. Now the prophet Jeremiah warned against the violation of the year of Jubilee Let's turn to Jeremiah chapter 34. Jeremiah chapter 34, and let's read verse 16 and 17. says here, then you turned around and profaned my name, and every one of you brought back his male and female slaves, whom he had set at liberty at their pleasure, and brought them back into subjection to be your male and female slaves. Therefore, thus says the Lord, you have not obeyed me in proclaiming liberty, every one to his brother and every one to his neighbor, and here the Lord gets as I see it, so it's sarcastic, and he says, Behold, I proclaim liberty to you, says the Lord, to the sword, to pestilence, and to famine, and I will deliver you to trouble among all the kingdoms of the earth. So as you can see, the Lord was not very happy here about the violation of the year of Jubilee. And soon after this prophecy in Jeremiah 34 came the Babylonian exile. However, the Lord also raised up the prophet Isaiah to speak further about the year of Jubilee. And Isaiah is well known for his many messianic prophecies about Yeshua. Here's a few examples. Isaiah 7.14, the Lord himself will give you a sign. A virgin will be with child and will bear a son and you shall name him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Isaiah 9 verse 6, for to us a child is born and a son is given, the government will be upon his shoulders, and he shall be called in Hebrew Peleoetz, wonderful counselor, El Gibor, mighty God, Aviad, everlasting father, Sar Shalom, prince of peace. And then again in Isaiah 11, verse 1 and 2, a shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse and a branch, reading Natsair in Hebrew, pointing toward Yeshua who is the branch who grew up in Nazareth. A branch shall grow out of his roots and the spirit of the Lord will rest upon him. Isaiah 48 verse 16 reads, And now the Lord God has sent me with his spirit. Now I believe that is actually capturing the triune nature of God in a single verse of scripture. And now the Lord God Father has sent me, the Son, with his Spirit, meaning the Ruach. Another one, Isaiah 53, about God's suffering servant, who is Yeshua, who was pierced for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities, and by his stripes we are healed. So with these prophecies from Isaiah in mind, let's look at another one as we turn to Isaiah chapter 61. Isaiah 61. Beginning in verse 1. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. It reads there, Mashach, which of course we get Mashiach, the anointed one from that word. Because the Lord has anointed me to preach 
good tidings. Now the original Hebrew there uses the word basar, which means news. So it really means to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Now we know that everything written in the Torah, in the Nevi'im, and in the Tehillim, meaning in the Law, the Prophets, and the Psalms, testified of Yeshua. As a matter of fact, those were Yeshua's own words in Luke 24, verse 44. He is the written word which became the living word in Yeshua of Nazareth. John 1.14 tells us that the word became flesh and dwelt among us. I always say this, that every jot and tittle of the Torah and the Tanakh is the spiritual DNA of the Messiah himself, the Torah made flesh. And so therefore, the words of Isaiah 61, verse 1 and 2, that we just read here, would literally find their fulfillment in the Messiah as well, just like all the other messianic prophecies in Isaiah did. Now we know that God did establish the year of Jubilee in the Torah in Leviticus chapter 25 to give the Israelites a chance to start all over socially and economically, but it went much deeper than that. It pointed toward Yeshua, the Torah made flesh, who one day would really set them free. Hallelujah. Including you and me today. Now let's go to the New Covenant, to the Gospel of Luke, chapter 4. And see how Isaiah 61 finds fulfillment. Luke chapter 4, let's begin with verse 14. Then Yeshua returned in the power of the Spirit to Galilee, and news of him went out through all the surrounding region. Let's hold it up there for a moment. Luke chapter 4 verse 1 tells us that Yeshua was filled with the Spirit as he was led into the wilderness. But now he returns in the power of the Spirit. And there is a difference between the two. As believers, we may be filled with the Spirit, but we may also need to go through our own wilderness in order to learn how to operate in the power of the Spirit. Verse 15. And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified by all. So he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day, and he stood up to read. This was Yeshua's regular custom, to attend Shabbat services in the synagogue. And you know, he still does. And he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah, and when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. And then he closed the book and he gave it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all who were in the synagogue were fixed on him. It reminds me of the scripture that says, fix your eyes upon Yeshua, the author and the finisher of your faith. And he began to say to them, today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. So early in his ministry, Yeshua makes this astounding declaration that he is the Messiah, but they rejected him. And they not only rejected him, but they actually became furious with him, beginning in verse 28. And they tried to throw him off a cliff, but he just slipped through the crowds. You know that was divine intervention. 
And I believe for those few moments, God made time stop for him. Now you may think that that is far fetched, but not really, because it reminds us of when God made the sun and the moon stand still while Joshua defeated the Amorites. It also reminds us of when Yeshua told the winds and the waves to cease and be still, and they obeyed him. The Lord does things like that. Now sadly, even as it was at the synagogue in Nazareth here, it's still the same today. Yeshua is still being rejected by his Jewish brothers. But one day, praise the Lord, they will look upon him, the one whom they have pierced, and they will mourn for him as for a firstborn son, as for an only child, says Zechariah 12.10. They will cry out, Baruch haba b'shem Adonai, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Yeshua prophesied that in Matthew 23, verse 39. Paul adds, the deliverer will come from Zion, and all Israel shall be saved. Hallelujah. Now we praise God for the growth of the Jewish believers in Yeshua that we're seeing all around the world today, especially in the land of Israel. But get ready, because there's a lot more coming. Can I get a big amen to that? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Get ready, there's a lot more coming. Wait till the rabbis start coming out of their closet saying, that's it. I'm convinced Yeshua is Messiah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And King of Glory. Israel. Glory. Glory. Later members of the Knesset and other Israeli government officials, including the Prime Minister, start saying, that's it. I'm convinced Yeshua is the Son of God and He is risen from the dead. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We just speak that right into the prophetic realm right now. God's word will not go forth void, but will accomplish the purpose for which it has been sent. The word of God says that the deliverer will come from Zion and all Israel shall be saved. Hallelujah. Amen. Now let's turn to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. passage of scripture, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, let's begin with verse 16. For the Lord himself would descend from heaven with a shout, the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, underline the word trumpet, we'll come back to that and the dead in Messiah will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Now the word trumpet that I had you underline reads in Greek salpinx, which doesn't mean trumpet. It really means a quavering, a vibration, or a reverberation. And I really believe that that's referring to the shofar blast from heaven. The same shofar blast from heaven that we see in Exodus 19, verse 16, at Mount Sinai, when Moses brought the people out of the camp to meet with God. Only when this shofar sounds, we shall be brought out of the earth, hallelujah, to meet Yeshua in the air. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Imagine the joy when we hear the blast of that shofar, announcing the jubilee of all jubilees, yeah. announcing the second coming of the Messiah, the rapture, hallelujah, Amen. and going to the wedding supper of the Lamb. Hallelujah. Amen. And that also will be followed by the millennial kingdom of the Messiah, where we will rule and reign with him for a thousand Glory. years. Hallelujah. And as we read in Ezekiel 47, we also will divide up the land. And then, going home to live with Yeshua, hallelujah, in the kingdom of heaven forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Let's all stand for a moment. Hallelujah. And as Leonardo sounds the shofar, after the long last blast, let's all shout out, it's the year of Jubilee.
eye on the prize because we're going to hear the sound of that shofar. We're going to hear the loud shout of the archangel. We're going to see Yeshua coming on the clouds of glory to claim his bride. And if you believe that, give the Lord another great applause. Yeah. 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 Okay, we can be seated for a moment. Now, let's make some further personal application of the year of Jubilee to our lives today. Because even though we know the basic principles of the year of Jubilee, many believers do not have the real release and the real victory that God really wants them to have. Hallelujah. Many are still bound up with problems and attacks from the enemy, which is stealing their joy. But God, somebody say, but God. But God. But God wants us to have a real breakthrough and a real victory through the Jubilee. Praise the Lord. You know, we have not been given a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. And of God before us, who can be against us. Hallelujah. Amen. So let's take a closer look here at those four main aspects of the year of Jubilee, as we saw in Leviticus chapter 25. Number one, the Jubilee was proclaimed on the Day of Atonement, on Yom Kippur. Secondly, it was ushered in with the blast of the shofar. Thirdly, it is connected with streams of living water and the prophetic song. And fourth, it is connected with a release from captivity through the power of the Holy Spirit. So let's look at the Day of Atonement. Yom Kippur, which we know is the 10th day of the 7th month. Clearly, God makes a reference there to the blood of Yeshua. How many of you know that there is power in the blood? Hallelujah. Somebody say it. There's power, power. in the power blood. blood. Say it again. There's power, There's power in the blood. blood. Through the blood, your sins have been paid for, slain, wiped clean. Amen? Amen. All Amen. debts have been canceled. Yes, yes Lord. They've been thrown into a sea of forgetfulness, says the prophet Micah in chapter 7, verse 19. You know, if your sin has been put under the blood of Yeshua, God doesn't even remember your sin anymore, says Jeremiah 31, verse 34. So don't let anyone or anything lay a guilt trip on you. Don't believe the lies of the enemy. Don't let anyone or anything lay a guilt trip on you and don't lay one on yourself either. No personal pity parties. How many of you remember the song? It's, it's my party and I'll cry if I want to, cry if I want to, cry if I want to. You would cry too if it happened to you. Ooby -doo -ooby -doo. Leslie go. The phrase, there's power in the blood, is very real. It's not just some religious cliche that we like to say. It has a real effect in the spirit world. It has a real effect in the spiritual realm. realm. Satan hates that phrase, there's power in the blood, because he knows he's been defeated by the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. And also that we overcome him by the blood of the Lamb. Satan hates the blood, but so what? It's just too bad for him. He's been defeated by the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. Praise God. God purposely connected the year of Jubilee with the blood of Yeshua. Get that into your spirit. Because when the Son of God sets you free, you are free indeed. Your debts have been canceled, your slate has been wiped clean, and praise the Lord, your name has been written in the Lamb's Book of Life. The second main theme is the shofar. The shofar it actually proclaims the Jubilee. It announces it, it makes it official. It causes everyone to wake up. Leonardo, would you give us one more long blast? The shofar announces the jubilee and it causes everyone to wake up. Down the 
walls of the enemy. You know, it did for the children of Israel in the taking of Jericho, Jericho, remember the walls came tumbling down? Amen. It also brought down the strongholds of the enemy when the Israelites won the Six-Day War in 1967, when God restored Jerusalem back into the hands of the Jewish people. Amen. The sound of the shofar, it sends confusion into the camp of the enemy, but victory into the camp of the righteous. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's an audible sound, that you, we just heard it, that you can hear with the natural ear, but it's causing things to happen in the spirit realm that the natural ear Glory. cannot hear, Hallelujah. namely the tearing down of the strongholds and the walls of the enemy. Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 tells us that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God even to the pulling down of strongholds, and the shofar is definitely a weapon of warfare. And as we saw earlier in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, the shofar will sound from heaven. There'll be a loud shout of an archangel and we're going to see Yeshua coming on the clouds of glory. Who's looking forward to being at the wedding supper of the Amen. Lord? Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Thirdly, God connected the year of Jubilee with streams of water and the prophetic song. In the past, I've explained the prophetic song, which is also known as the Song of the Lord. It's a brand new song that's birthed spontaneously right in the middle of a spirit-filled praise and worship service. It's actually brought on by the mantle of prophecy by the cloud of glory that's hovering over the congregation. The cloud of glory was hovering over the congregation this morning as we were worshiping the Lord in spirit and in truth. The same Holy Spirit that was hovering over the waters as God was giving birth to a brand new creation. The same Holy Spirit that descended upon Yeshua when he went into the waters of Mikvah in Matthew chapter 3 verse 16. And often this prophetic song or the song of the Lord begins with an anointed worshiper singing a new song, even just a few words as the Spirit gives them utterance. And then others join in, the musicians join in, the dancers join in, the banners and the flags are lifted up, the whole congregation joins in, hallelujah. And so what began as this little trickle of water now becomes a stream of flowing water, which becomes a mighty river of praise and prophecy. And where does that go back? It goes back to Yuval, to Jubal, the father of all musicians, whose name means a stream of water. And you know, God wants you to jump into that river and get wet in the spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. We say, jump into the river, jump into the river, jump into the river of praise. Jump into the river, jump into the river, jump into the river of praise. Sing it again. Jump into the river, jump into the river, jump into the river of praise. Jump into the river, jump into the river, jump into the river of praise. Jump into the river of praise. Jump into that river. Jump into that river. Jump into the river of praise. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. God wants us to jump into that river. It's connected with the prophetic song. Because wherever that river flows, it brings healing. It brings liberty. It brings joy. It brings freedom. Praise God. It will bring you and me and the whole congregation into higher elevations of worship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many of you want to go into higher elevations of worship? How many of you want to come up to Mount Zion, to the city of our God, to the joyful assembly Hallelujah. of thousands upon thousands Woo! of angels? Go. Hallelujah. Where our names are written in heaven. How many of you want to fall down before the throne of the Almighty with the four living creatures and the 24 yes. elders and a countless multitude of angels crying out, Kadosh, 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 holy, holy, holy is the Lord Amen. God of hosts. We did it this morning. All glory, all honor, Hallelujah. all power, all 
all praise, all riches, all strength, yes. all wisdom, yes. and all blessings belongs to the Lamb of God who Amen. sits upon the throne. He is the King of kings. He is the King of glory. He is the King of Israel. He is the King of the universe. He is our good King. And our good King is coming back soon. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise Amen. the name of Yeshua. Hallelujah. Amen. His name is Yeshua. Yeshua. His name is above every other name. Every knee will bow and every tongue will confess His name that Yeshua is Lord of all to the glory of Hallelujah. God the Father. Hallelujah. His kingdom Amen. endures forever and His kingdom will surely swallow up all the kingdoms of the earth. Yes. And if you believe that, give the Lord another great Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That was the prophetic word of the Lord. That was the Holy Spirit that was just carrying me along and all, all of us as well. Great. Hallelujah. Yeah. God connected the year of Jubilee with streams of living water and the prophetic song. Get that Amen. into your spirit. It will set you free. Thank and you. finally, God connected the year of Jubilee with even more freedom and release in our lives through the Ruach HaKodesh. Yeshua said in Luke chapter 4, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me to preach good news to the poor. How many of you have received that good news? That Yeshua Hallelujah. is Lord and that He is risen from the dead. Hallelujah. Yes. Praise yes. God. Yeshua also said that the Spirit of the Lord is upon me to heal the brokenhearted. You know, God didn't just heal our heart. He gave us a brand new one. Ezekiel 36, verse 26, he says, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit, meaning my spirit, within you. Yeshua said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me to proclaim liberty to the captives and to those who are oppressed, meaning to those who are in bondage. But through Yeshua, glory to God, we are more than conquerors. We are overcomers by the blood of the Lamb. Greater is he who lives in us than he that is in the world. God always causes us to triumph in the Messiah, Yeshua. We are the head, not the tail. We are above and not below. If God be for us, who can be against us? He is the glory and the lifter of our heads. Somebody lift up your hands and give the Lord some more praise. Hallelujah! We praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Yeshua said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me to bring recovery of sight to the blind. Amen. How many of you once were blind, but now you can see? see? How many of you once were in the darkness, but now you've been brought into God's marvelous light? Hallelujah. Yeshua said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, meaning the year of Jubilee, the real Jubilee that only comes through Yeshua. Somebody say, it's all about Yeshua. It's all about Yeshua. And how many of you know that Yeshua is the same yesterday, today, and forever? And today, right now, in this synagogue, on Shabbat, Yeshua says, today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Hallelujah. Yes, hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, I believe God is saying to you today, to many of you who are here, it's the year of Jubilee for you. Mm -hmm. It's the year of release. It's the year of liberty. It's the year of victory for you. No more negative confessions. Mm -hmm. Only positive confessions. Yes. I think some of you are receiving this word right now. Some of you have been struggling with relationships or with finances or with other problems, family members. Hear the word of the Lord. God's word is the final authority. No more negative confessions. Only positive confessions. Remember, the enemy is the father of all lies. Yeshua has come to give us the abundant life. Let's all stand for Lord. I'd like you to repeat after me. Let's have the word team come back up. Hallelujah.
Alleluia. Just surrender yourself to God right now. Lift up your hands and repeat after me. I'm going to walk in the blessings of God. I'm going to walk in the blessings of God. It's the year of jubilee for me. It's the year of jubilee for me. It's the year of release for me. It's the year of release for me. It's the year of liberty for me. It's the year of liberty for me. It's the year of freedom for me. It's the year of freedom for me. It's the year of victory for me. It's the year of victory for me. And let's also remember that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And when the Son of God sets you free, you are free indeed. Give the Lord another clap.
Let's give him one more big, big clap. 